Welcome to Science Tree Channel and today's topic is classification of carbohydrates. Now this is chapter number 13 from class 10th. Carbohydrates are the major source of energy for the body. Very simple and easy to digest. Let's study about them. Now in the classification, carbohydrates are classified as monosaccharides, oligosaccharides and polysaccharides. We will gonna read them or learn them one by one. Now monosaccharides. Mono means single and saccharide. Have you ever think about it from where this word come? Yes. It comes from the Latin word. In Latin, for sugar, we use the word saccharide, meaning sweet sand. So here we are talking about monosaccharides, means singly used sweet sands, okay? Monosaccharides are the simplest sugars, which cannot be further hydrolyzed because they are the simplest ones they are the basic units they are used to make further other complex monosaccharides sorry further other complex oligo and polysaccharides so that's why they are known as simplest sugars so as they are simplest how they can be further hydrolyzed they consist of 3 to 9 carbon atoms. So when they have 3 carbon atoms, they will be termed as trioses. When they have 4 carbon atoms, they will gonna be termed as tetroses. Now here the terms are changing due to the number of carbon atoms. 3 is representing by trioses, 4 is representing by tetroses, 5 is representing by pentoses, and six carbon sugar atoms are represented by hexoses and so on. The important monosaccharides are hexoses like glucose and fructose. Glucose is the simplest sugar or we can say that the simplest form of energy source which our body use. It is present in meat, rice, wheat and uh, other cereals. And fructose again having six carbon atoms. In glucose we have six carbon atoms, in fructose we have six carbon atoms but then what is the difference? The difference is with the functional group. Fructose is present in fruits. Now in monosaccharides glucose is a pentahydroxyaldehyde while fructose is pentahydroxyketone having the open chain structures and general formula is C6H12O6. Let's study about them. Now if I talk about fructose, fructose is known as polyhydroxyketone because poly means many. Hydroxy, hydroxyl group, which will be represented as OH. And polyhydroxy ketone. Ketone means that fructose has functional group double bond O, which is ketone. This one. But if I talk about glucose, that is polyhydroxy aldehyde. Now again the word poly is representing many and hydroxy is representing hydroxyl group while the functional group is aldehyde which is this one C double bond OH. So in this way if I talk about the general formula which will be gonna be same C6H12O6 but if we study it deeply then we come to know that their functional groups are different. Properties of monosaccharides means that how they look like. 
monosaccharides are white crystalline solids like all these in the icons this one okay they are soluble in water and have sweet taste just like you can take a glass of water and put a spoon of sugar in it what do you think or what do you taste it will be changed into sweet taste so that is glucose monosaccharide they cannot be hydrolyzed means they cannot be further break down into simple sugars they are already the simpler ones they are reducing in nature therefore these are called as reducing sugars now why they are reducing in nature because they have aldehyde group present in them and this aldehyde group cho can further oxidize to carboxylic acid so as it can undergo oxidation it can reduce others so that's why they are known as reducing sugars what is their important now the next type of carbohydrates are oligosaccharides oligosaccharides give 2 to 9 units of monosaccharides on hydrolysis hydrolysis means to break down they are classified as disaccharides trisaccharides or tetrasaccharides it depends that how many number of carbon atoms are present in them here we come to know that how monosaccharides joins together to give oligosaccharides the most important oligosaccharide is sucrose that is a disaccharide in common words we used to say sugar on hydrolysis sucrose produces 1 unit of glucose and 1 unit of fructose so can i say that monosaccharides joins together to give us oligosaccharides glucose is a monosaccharide and fructose is also a monosaccharide having the same chemical formula but different functional group now what happens when they both join together they can give sucrose which is a disaccharide here in this reaction sucrose is undergoing hydrolysis joins with water and changes into glucose and fructose and i have told you before that fructose is present in fruits and glucose is present in rice and wheat now the properties of oligosaccharides oligosaccharides are white crystalline solids they are soluble in water and are also sweet in taste they may be reducing or non reducing because sucrose is formed by joining two monosaccharides one is glucose and the second is fructose they both join together by means of a glycosidic bond and that's why they are mostly non reducing why oligosaccharides are important oligosaccharides can have many functions including cell recognition and cell binding in cell recognition cell have an ability to differentiate between neighboring cells and in cell binding the cell decide that how it will going to bind with other molecules glycolipids have an important role in immune response and the glycolipids are formed when oligosaccharides joins with lipids they are normally present as glycanes oligosaccharide chains linked to lipids or to compatible amino acids in proteins by n or o glycosidic bonds 
the last but not the least is polysaccharides and what the word poly stands for poly means many and the saccharide i have told you before it's a latent word it means sugar or we can say that sweet sand polysaccharides are macromolecular carbohydrates macro the big one macromolecular very big carbohydrates consisting of hundreds to thousands of monosaccharides which joins together to give big and big molecules of carbohydrates the common examples are starch and cellulose now the starch is present in plants and cellulose is present in animals properties of polysaccharides they are amorphous solids and the word amorphous means shapeless having no proper shape they are tasteless and insoluble in water they are non reducing in nature so they are quite different than as compared to that of monosaccharides and oligosaccharides why polysaccharides are important their function in living organisms is usually either structure or storage related now the starch present in plants a basic energy source obtained from plants and cellulose a structural polysaccharide in plants when consumed it acts as a dietary fiber a very important use of polysaccharide glycogen a storage form of glucose in human liver and muscles when we don't use to eat anything from morning to evening or we are hungry then at that time glycogen is utilizing as a glucose as a basic source of energy in our body and in the breakfast or in the lunch time when we used to eat good things or when we have to take a full diet at that time the extra amount of our uh, glucose is stored in liver and muscles in the form of glycogen and this extra amount will going to utilize when we feel hunger and we don't have to anything to eat at that time thank you so much for more videos keep watching Have a great day